Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, March 24th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, with everything going on in the world, probably the last thing you need is a vulnerability in Microsoft Windows that's currently not patched and that is already being exploited. That's exactly what Microsoft announced today. Now, the vulnerability is a font parsing vulnerabilities. These font parsing vulnerabilities are quite common. Uh, there are probably a couple being fixed each month at Patch Tuesday. This one in particular relates to the type one font parsing and affects the Adobe Type Manager library or atmfd.dll. All current versions of Windows are affected back to Windows 7, 32 and 64 bits. Also Windows Server 2008 and later is affected. So what can you do to mitigate this until a patch arrives? Well, uh, Microsoft offers a couple of workarounds. The first one is just to disable the preview pane and details pane in Windows Explorer. That's probably the easiest thing to do as a regular user because it just requires you to use some basic settings. And now a bit more tricky is either disabling the web client service, which which actually probably doesn't ultimately fix the problem, but reduces your attack surface somewhat. And probably the best fix, but a little bit the trickiest one, is to rename atmfd.dll the vulnerable DLL. Now, a little bit about this. So renaming DLLs like this, uh, I wouldn't normally recommend it. It tends to have some unintended consequences because now essentially you can no longer render any fonts that need to be rendered by this library. However, DDA found that on recent Windows 10 systems, talking anything 18 or 04 and later, uh, this DLL often appears to be missing. So maybe it's not really all that important. I'll leave this up to you. It's really too early to make sort of a definite uh, decision whether or not uh, it's worthwhile deleting or renaming this DLL. At this point, there is no public exploit for this vulnerability. It has been seen in targeted attacks. Now, historically, these font parsing vulnerabilities, in particular, as far as they affected atmfd.dll, have had uh, the problem that the code used to run in kernel mode. However, Microsoft has been working in part because of this history to move more and more of the code into user space. And that's why with Windows 10, as uh, the advisory states, a successful attack could only result in code execution within an app container sandbox context with limited privileges and capabilities. So you have a little bit more isolated code execution in Windows 10 because of these additional controls. We'll see what's going to happen with uh, this vulnerability. I would expect Microsoft to address this vulnerability no later than April's patch Tuesday. And the malware that's taking advantage of COVID-19 just uh, keeps coming in. Really too much to talk about it all, but I would like to give a shout out to Parth Maniar, who put together a GitHub uh, repository with indicators of compromise for various exploits and attacks and such that are taking advantage of COVID-19. At this point, as I'm recording this, he has 18 IP address, 283 different hashes and 219 URLs that are involved in some form of malicious COVID-19 activity. And one of the sort of big topics uh, this year so far has been that uh, browsers have gotten more and more aggressive in disabling old versions of TLS. Firefox, for example, in version 74 was going to disable TLS 1.0 and 1.1. Well, uh, Mozilla now has reverted that decision and decided not to disable these TLS versions in part because a lot of government sites 
websites that do distribute critical information about COVID-19 are still using these old protocols. Personally, I was obviously a little bit uh, critical of the fact that browsers did disable these protocols in part uh, because your only other option and in some cases was to actually go back to using no version of SL or TLS at all. And in the end, uh, TLS 1.0, 1.1 are probably still better than just plain HTTP. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. We are planning a possible little video actually about the Microsoft uh, vulnerability. Still working on this, uh, but uh, should be live tomorrow on Tuesday before noon Eastern time. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.